neither party should delay or obstruct every single bill just because they can. I know it's an election year, and after last week, it's clear that campaign fever has come even earlier than usual. But we still need to govern. To Democrats, I would remind you that we still have the largest majority in decades, and the people expect us to solve problems, not run for the hills. And if the Republican leadership is going to insist that, that 60 votes in the Senate are required to do any business at all in this town, a supermajority, then the responsibility to govern is now yours as well. Just saying no to everything may be good short-term politics, but it's not leadership. I think they do think it's good short-term politics. I think Republicans think saying no to everything is, in fact, great politics. Joining us now is Chris Matthews, host of Hardball. Chris, thanks very much for staying up. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, Rachel. You know, I agree. Yeah. That's, it's a hard call, but we are, we're all looking at these coming November elections. And I, I was looking at John Cornyn from Texas, the head of the campaign committee, chuckling away there tonight. And, and of course, Mitch McConnell, who has a sort of a George Will kind of chuckle. And I thought they were enjoying the president's joke without any intention whatever of playing ball with them. That they are going to be no people. So it's just right down the line. it's just theater, but it's theater on both sides because we see the president saying Republicans have to lead. You have to participate. We really would like you to participate. We expect you to participate. And then you see the Republican response in which they say we don't want all this partisanship. We'd love to be constructively involved. Right. You think both sides equally know well, it's never going to happen, or do you think the Democrats are naive and think it will? Well, he has to try, and I think the president was very much the, uh, you know, they have a number of hats they wear, presidents. One of them is obviously head of the executive branch, chief executive. They're also head of state. I thought as a head of state tonight, he was amazing, if you think about it. And I've, I've said this before, how I stunned I was when the 21-gun salute went over on inaugural day, how he became not just head of a political party, head of the executive branch, but really head of the country. And I thought he did speak but almost like Eisenhower, down to the country, and you politicians out there, and I'm above lobbying and all this sleaze, and you guys are part of that. And I thought he did a very good job of establishing a moral level above them, both sides. And I thought that worked. I thought he was very much an inclusive sort of American leader tonight, not just a politician. Now, of course, he was also playing a game, I think, of trying to seduce through love, if you will, through honey, uh, to bring the Republicans aboard on health care. You and I, I think, both saw somewhere toward the end of tonight's event where the Republicans even felt they better get the signal to stand up and applaud for some of the, uh, the more obvious good, uh, you know, we can all agree on this one kind of thing. But I think health care is there. I think they all have health care problems at home. They all have the problem of, uh, you know, uh, you know pre-existing and Portability and all those questions and affordability, they're all real. And if you're a Republican from a state, you've got 45% of your state's Democrat, and they're going to make a lot of noise. And you've got poor people, working people, they're all complaining with letters to you all the time about these problems. So you'd like to at least look like you're going to address them, I think. Meanwhile, though, the, the other sort of political theater on Capitol Hill today were really conservative Republicans like Michelle Bachman and Steve King and all these guys signing a declaration of independence on health care almost, in the language of it, almost promising a revolution in order to stop health care. Wow. So, the, I mean, the, 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 the pressure the, the, the from the right is so hard for them, even if any of them were moved. You're so tonight. right. It's, it's so hard. It's hard. You know, the pr people like Mike, like uh, NZ of Wyoming and people like John McCain we know so well and people like Arne Hatch and all. Arne Hatch is worried about Robert Bennett, his fellow Republican senator from Utah, getting a primary challenge. Obviously, J.D. Hayes is scaring the heck out of McCain. All these guys who would normally be open potentially at least to a deal with the center and across the aisle now are honoring one thing don't have a primary challenge if you have one be scared to death so it is creating a terrible dynamic today for any kind of grab five republicans on health care grab yeah. three grab two uh, certainly don't it's a tough job to grab 10 but i did think he was really good i know we can't get beyond of philosophical arguments, and we shouldn't because that's what this country is based on, good philosophical arguments. Can we get ahead of petty partisanship? Probably not in an election year between now and November on most issues, unless this guy, this president's able to really take us beyond the usual. But 
I was overwhelmed by the harmony with which he spoke to the country tonight. I think he's going to get good numbers tomorrow in the next couple of days from the reaction of the country that I think he was so presidential, so big, so wide in his scope on all these issues. I think he was Clinton-esque, when it, Bill Clinton-esque when it came to addressing so many concerns. I think the public, once those concerns addressed, it shows he's connected to us. And I, I was impressed tonight. Uh, I know we have arguments, you and I, about the, how he does dressing things that he promised he would, but I'm, I was impressed by his leadership of the country. Hardball's Chris Matthews. And can I say one more point? I think sure. something that I mentioned earlier tonight, and I'm, I'm very proud I did it. I hope I can say it the right way. You know, this country's been, and I grew up in a country that was driven apart by race right until the 60s. You couldn't have a black member of the United States cabinet. There are no black cabinet members in the Kennedy administration. Uh, it has been such a big part of our life in big cities, this sort of ethnic uh, debate, ethnic fighting. And then to see a president of the United States who who is African-American, I was thinking tonight, this isn't even an issue tonight. How far we've come in just a year where it was a campaign issue in some parts of the country. It was talked about as something that would hurt him. And it wasn't in the room tonight. You could feel it wasn't there tonight. And that takes leadership on his part to get us beyond these divisions. Really national leadership. And I felt it wonderfully tonight. It's almost like an epiphany. And I hope it's true. I hope what I saw is true that we've gotten beyond it. At least, well... In the presidential level, I think it's still going to be out there in American life. But I think he's done something wonderful. I think he's taken us beyond black and white in our politics. Wonderfully so in just a year, I think. Chris Matthews of MSNBC's and Hardball, I'm loving it. who is both fun to talk to and a big thinker on these things and willing to talk about stuff that's hard to talk about sometimes on TV. It is. Chris, I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you.